Hello, I'm Alison Kent, and I work with the Global Protection Cluster. As the GPC, we support 32 protection cluster operations around the world with the aim of addressing priority protection risks with communities affected by conflict and crisis. And we do this work with a very diverse range of local, national, and international protection partners. One of the six core cluster functions, including for the protection cluster, is around advocacy. And this reflects both the aim of ensuring that uh, protection analysis and protection priorities and, and priority risks are informing more strategic level decision making across the humanitarian response. And also that the cluster is able to advance advocacy with and on behalf of cluster members, and of course, with affected communities. And as the protection cluster, we've really tried to focus on strengthening our advocacy work, both at country and global levels over the past several years. And we really see it as critical to strengthening our impact and really ultimately strengthening the protection outcomes for communities. Over the past year, the GPC has been involved in the collaborative development of a protection advocacy toolkit. Together with Oxfam, the Network for Empowered Aid Response, and the Overseas Development Institute. And this work has been done with thanks to the financial support of ECHO. We've developed this toolkit with the aim of strengthening capacity for effective protection advocacy across the humanitarian system. And so it's aimed at supporting you know, protection actors and advocates operating at local levels, all the way up to those who may be trying to advance global influencing efforts. And you can see on the screen that the toolkit's available on the Global Protection Clusters website, and you can access it in English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. In developing the toolkit, we realized there were some excellent resources and tools developed by different development and humanitarian actors that we could draw from. And so rather than recreating things, and starting from scratch, we took an approach where we've adapted existing tools and focused on how to make them as supportive of more targeted, risk-informed, and collaborative protection advocacy efforts. Another sort of key focus and foundational approach with the toolkit has been around how to advance collective uh, and complementary protection advocacy efforts. And this is really grounded in the commitment of the GPC, of Oxfam and NIR to do this kind of work with partners and with allies and in networked approaches. And it also reflects a lot of the recent research and learnings in terms of what makes for the most effective protection advocacy. So to build on this, the, some of the recent research and learnings, I want to mention uh, the work that has been done by the Overseas Development Institute and their humanitarian policy group over the past several years. So they have led a program of work called Advocating for Humanity. And with this effort, they've produced a number of different research studies, uh, reports, and case studies that look at different elements of protection advocacy and really focus on um, providing greater evidence and learning around you know, what makes for some of the most effective kinds of advocacy. So you can access all of these different resources on their website, which is up on the screen. And importantly, in developing the toolkit, we took a number of the different uh, research elements uh, and findings and ensured that we could integrate it into the different modules and case studies that are included in the toolkit. So diving in a little bit more in terms of what's in this toolkit, you can see here uh, in, on the, the right-hand side with the table of contents, we've organized the toolkit around five core modules. Uh, the first module is around defining protection advocacy objectives. And here we outline how you can use protection analysis to determine your specific advocacy objective that's based on priority risks that are identified and the capacities of communities and partners. And then looking at how advocacy can be used to complement other protection interventions and programming efforts. 
The second module is focused on stakeholder mapping, power analysis, and theory of change. In this section, we get into identifying key stakeholders and ultimately your targets for advocacy. We look at how to understand different levels of influence that they may have, uh, as well as their engagement uh, around particular advocacy issues, their interests, their values, their positions, and an important element is looking at who influences those targets and understanding the broader chains of influence that might be at play. From there, the section outlines how to build your theory of change, ultimately how you understand or think change can happen on your particular advocacy objective. And this is really about uh, supporting advocates and protection actors to map out how best you can persuade the targeted decision makers identified through your stakeholder mapping. The third module is focused on protection advocacy approaches and tactics. So here we outline some of the different um, activities and, and tactics you can use to influence and persuade. And this is very much based on the stakeholder mapping and theory of change. So here it's about trying to um, adapt and tailor your efforts um, to ensure that you can get the most traction and have the greatest impact with your particular audiences and advocacy targets. The fourth module covers monitoring and measuring of advocacy outcomes. So here we're focused on monitoring of your advocacy efforts to enable you to continually adapt and course correct your different advocacy actions and tactics so that you're constantly trying to maximize the impact that you have. That you have. Uh, and importantly, in terms of measuring, this is really about trying to capture some of the contributions that you and your allies are able to make uh, over, over time towards your particular advocacy objective. The fifth module is focused on managing protection advocacy risks. So here we go more into managing risks associated with protection advocacy. And importantly here, again, we take a big focus on collective approaches to doing this. So this section includes some tools and guidance for undertaking shared risk assessments um, with partners, with communities and other stakeholders, and then outlining what kinds of risk management plans and actions can you put in place to ensure uh, a do no harm approach. And again, to ensure the protection of all involved. In the next section of the toolkit, you will find five case studies. Uh, and each of these offer real life illustrations of collective protection advocacy that have been carried out by different partners on, on a range of different protection priorities. And our hope here is really that the case studies will offer further inspiration in terms of some of the successes and impacts of protection advocacy, as well as some practical insights in terms of the different approaches and strategies that have been used um, by some of our partners to advance change. And then in the third section, you can see that it's focused on tools and guides. And so this is really a compilation of some of the different resources we've pointed to throughout the modules. And as mentioned earlier, a lot of these have been adapted by um, in, based on existing resources and tailored and tweaked to be as relevant as possible to protection advocacy efforts. And we've been able to test out a number of these different tools um, over the past months through different trainings and workshops that we've been running with protection partners at country level. And I think a final thing to note with the toolkit is really that there, there aren't often easy answers with advocacy work, and there's often not just one way to do it. And so it's more art than science. Um, but at the same time, we do collectively as a sector have an increasing amount of learning, experience and evidence with regards to what makes for effective protection advocacy. And so we really hope with the toolkit uh, that protection actors are able to better draw on some of this knowledge uh, and to find some different insights and resources that can help further refine advocacy strategies, approaches, risk management, and other elements um, to ensure that we're constantly moving forward in terms of increasing our effectiveness and ultimately our impact. 
uh, in support of the protection and rights of crisis affected communities. So thanks for listening. I hope you will find the toolkit interesting and we look forward to hearing feedback uh, as you start to dig in and use it in your own advocacy efforts. Thanks.